How to use the cost and revenue diagram. Look at the following question. Use a cost and revenue diagram to assess the likely effect of a rise in the cost of cement, on the price and output of newly built houses, and on the profits of a major builder. The cost and revenue diagram is the most effective way to explain the effects of a cost shock on a firm's price, its output, and profits. To develop your answer, firstly set up the standard diagram for a firm operating in a non-competitive market. Next, apply context to the model. The question is about house building, so adjust the axes accordingly. Assume the firm, the house builder, is a profit maximizer. To show this, Identify the output where the marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Now, identify profit maximizing output and price. Next, show the area representing super normal profits. At profit maximizing output, the area under the average total cost curve equals total costs, while the area under the average revenue curve equals total revenue. So, the rectangle of super normal profits is the area of total revenue minus the area of total costs. This is rectangle P, A, B, C. Now, move the correct curve to represent the cost increase. In this case, the rising cost of cement is an increase in variable costs, which causes the marginal cost curve to shift upwards to MC1. There is a new profit maximizing equilibrium at Q1, and the price of new houses is driven up to P1. The extent of the price increase depends upon the elasticity of demand for houses, reflected in the gradient of the average revenue curve. With a housing shortage, the price elasticity is likely to be inelastic, meaning that most, or all, of the cost increase is passed on in higher prices. Also, in evaluating the impact of the cost increase, it is possible that other building costs could have fallen so the effect might not be as large as shown. The output of houses is likely to fall to Q1. How much depends on the PED and the gradient of the AR curve? Profits before the cost increase are shown as the rectangle PABC. They have clearly fallen to rectangle P1XKM. This may reduce funds for R&D and investment in new technology, such as technology used in house design and construction. There are clearly other implications of the cost increase, including the impact on jobs. The reduction in house building may put bricklayers and other workers out of work. The multiplier effect may amplify this. In the longer term, House builders may look to source from different suppliers or use substitute materials. Of course, we are not told how much the price of cement increases. A small increase in the cost of cement could be assimilated into profits with no increase in price. This would depend on the pricing strategy used by house builders. Using a cost plus formula will automatically mean price will rise. The increase in the cost of cement is likely to raise the price of new houses, reduce the quantity of houses built, with lower profits for house builders. However, the price effect is uncertain and depends upon a range of other factors, including PED. It also depends on whether the cost increase is a temporary one-off shock or is expected to be a permanent change. Finally, the level of market competition between house builders can also affect the impact of the cost increase. The more competitive, the less likely price will increase.